The federal government needs 30,000 workers right now, but that's not going to happen. At least not anytime soon because they're looking for high demand workers, people who have experience in cybersecurity. Could you get one of these jobs? It could be easier than you think. The Pentagon Cyber Workforce has 175,000 positions, including 75,000 full-time government employees, 25,000 troops, and 75,000 contractors. The government likes hiring contractors because in the long run, it costs them less money. You don't have to worry about their benefits. You do not have to give them a pension. So it's a cheaper option. And people, they like being contractors because the time to hire is quicker. They can get a job faster and their salaries tend to be a little bit higher at times. Last year, 24% of all cyber jobs in the DOD were empty. Thousands of people in those positions, they decided to leave. Why? Well, the number one reason was money. And a leading director at the DOD, they said they, they have to start offering more incentives. They had to start paying more. And right now, if you look at the cyber jobs in DOD, they're categorized as Cyber Accepted Service, or CES. The big question is, why would you create this category for highly specialized workers? Well, the government claims that they can hire quicker and they can offer more pay. Now, when it comes to offering more pay, you have the same incentives in the competitive service. You don't have to switch everyone over to the accepted service. And the time to hire isn't that much quicker. Look at this chart here. It shows that mission critical IT jobs, they're taking an average of 94 days to hire, which is only six days sooner than the average. The main benefit for the federal government to use accepted service in this situation is for the flexibility because you can bypass the competitive hiring process. And this can include getting rid of veteran preference. And a lot of these jobs, you're gonna see it up there, they're not even considering veterans preference. And they can also offer higher money to lower graded positions. So the CES, they use the GG pay ban. The max salary is gonna be the same as the GS pay scale. So you're not gonna be able to earn any more than a GS 15 step 10. But let's say you're a GG 11, they can start you off at a higher salary in that situation. Now. For me, this is a missed opportunity because you have several agencies out there that have their own pay bands that exceed 191,000 a year. They exceed a GS-15. So if you look at the FDIC, if you look at the Security Exchange Commission, all of those agencies, they pay higher. So the DOD could do the same thing. The downside to CES or any accepted service job really is that you're not gonna be able to apply for competitive service jobs. You're gonna be confined to accepted service or open to the public. And many people are surprised once they have completed 10, 15, 20 years in the federal government, let's say in DOD, and then they realize, well, wait a minute, why can't I apply as a government employee? I've been working in the government for so long. And the, and the answer is, is because you're in the accepted service. If you're thinking about a cyber job, but you don't have any experience, you're probably gonna need at least one or two years maybe consider taking the Network Plus certification or the Security Plus in order to build a strong foundation. On usajobs.gov, you can type in Cyber Accepted Service and you can see here there's over 100 open jobs. This is an example of an IT cybersecurity job on the entry level side. It has a salary between 49 to 135,000 a year. This one is actually a customer support type job. It mainly involves talking to customers and troubleshooting computer problems to minimize interruptions. It's not exactly the type of job you would consider as cybersecurity because it's more customer support, but it falls in that category for DOD in order to classify it as cybersecurity. There's several areas that the Pentagon wants to focus on in 2025. And this includes areas like new standards for qualifications, new skill-based assessments, more apprenticeship programs, and higher pay. One goal that was missed by DOD, they wanted to create a separate bucket of money that they could use to train people. Not just train people, but to, to set up these two-year internship programs where they can get people out of university and kind of train them up and test them, see if they like them. And if they don't like them, they can get rid of them or they can keep them and grow them within the agency. That bucket of money, it doesn't exist yet, but it probably will. If you do have an IT background, maybe you're considering it. Let me see what CES is all about. Let me see what the DOD is all about. There's a couple of more considerations before taking a job like this. Number one is the security clearance. It can be somewhat invasive. It's like 130 pages that you're filling out about 
your past address, your past employers, did you do drugs, all that information. And if it's top secret with SCI, you could even be looking at a polygraph test in certain jobs. The next thing is there's gonna be less freedom when it comes to working at home. A lot of people love the idea of being able to work at home on their couch or in their bed or wherever in your house or apartment. If you have a job that requires a clearance, a lot of times when you're accessing these classified documents, you cannot do that at home. So it can restrict your ability to work from home. And then there's limited pay. Now on the high side, yeah, you can make six figures. You can make a hundred thousand, you can make 150,000 or even more than that. But if you want over 200,000, well, that's going to be a huge problem for you because right now the pay chart, the pay band doesn't go up that high and you probably can get that in the private sector. Look at Google. You can earn between 146 to 250,000 a year. And on top of that, you might get stock options. At Microsoft, you can get up to 237,000 a year. This is easily 40 to 60,000 more than you can get as a GS-15. And most people are not coming into the government as a GS-15 or as a senior executive. Also in the CES, you could be looking at a lengthy probationary period. In some cases, people have said, there's a three year probationary period. Now for a regular federal agency, for a regular federal government employee, it's only 12 months. But if you get into DOD in the CES program, you can see yourself being there a lot longer. Now the benefits, because it's not all bad, the benefits really, you have your, your stability, you have your security, you have your pension. So regardless of the political party that's in, in the administration right now, like there's a lot of talk about government jobs being cut severely, like half of them disappearing or something like that. I don't believe that, but regardless if it's a Republican or a Democrat that's in the White House, you're still going to have that security because DOD represents Homeland Security and people care about the security of this country, regardless of where you stand on your political ideology. People want to be safe. The federal pension is still alive and well, despite what some people think. Now it's not as good as the 1980s. In the early 1980s, they had the CSRS. It was an amazing pension program. It's not that, it's a lot less but it is still a dependable, a reliable stream of income that you can start collecting 60, 62, some cases 57. So it is something that you can count on in retirement. Now for many people, if they look in their states, the state government pensions, they tend to be a lot higher. If you look at Nebraska, they're multiplying their pension factor by 2%. That's that's 100% better than the federal pension. So look at your state options too. DOD does like to hire a lot of veterans. Now we just talked earlier about veterans preference. That's not going to be an obstacle for you if you're a non-vet because there's veteran preference is kind of pushed to the side when you're looking at the CES. But if you're a veteran thinking about maybe this should be my first government job. Well, if you're retiring, there's a 180 day rule saying that you cannot work for DOD after retirement. This isn't the case with the rest of the federal agencies. You can work for the VA, you can work for the IRS. But if you're not retiring, let's say you just did a couple of terms in, in the military and now you're looking at DOD jobs, I would tell you, ask yourself, do you like working in a military culture? Do you like the rank structure? Do you like how the organizational hierarchy is? Because in a lot of situations, it's more of the same. So if you don't like that, there's other agencies that you can go to. Look at the USDA, maybe the Department of Interior. You can go to so many other agencies that will give you a more civilian-like atmosphere and culture that you might be ready for. If you are interested in applying to federal government jobs, you probably have a lot of questions about the hiring process, about the different pay bands, about the different types of service. I did a live stream recently, I answered over a dozen questions. If you're interested in that, I want you to check this video out next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.